Michael Burry, master of making money in a falling market. His plan in 2008 was to go in the complete opposite direction of the flock. Unless the SEC changes its standards, Burry is not legally compelled to reveal the stocks he is shorting. What he is required to publish, however, is his stock ownership portfolio, including the U.S. companies he is purchasing and selling. To that end, welcome to Investing Path, and for today's video, we will be demonstrating a handful of points as we take a look at his unusual plan to make ends meet during these hard economic times. Now, before we go on, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to stay updated for more of our content. But other than that, let's proceed with our video. Let us take a look at Burry's activities last year, as they seem out of character. Despite his self-identification as a value investor, his trading style belies that label. Stocks purchased by value investors are typically held for a minimum of two years. Warren Buffett, known as the GOAT of value investing, has stated that his preferred holding term is forever. However, Buffett himself does not follow this strategy. Whenever he makes a stock purchase, he sells it very immediately. In the first three months of 2022, he made a total investment of 10 shares of stock. That's a diverse portfolio, including such companies as Warner Bros., Alphabet, Cigna Healthcare, Oventive, Nextdoor, Estelandis, Global Payments, and Sportsman's Warehouse. But Burry decides he no longer wants to own them in the next quarter. As a result, he unloads all of the stocks he bought in the first quarter, and some old favorites like Bristol and Squibb, it would be wise to load up on stocks during one quarter, and then sell them off in bulk during the next three months. He has a strange trading pattern for someone who claims to be a value investor, as he tends to buy and sell in extremely short intervals. But his approach to the market is more akin to a trading strategy. So, he bought a bunch in quarter 1 2022, sold them all in quarter 2 of 2022, and then bought just one stock in quarter 3 of 2022. The entirety of his investment portfolio consists of the stock GEO. In the United States, Canada, Australia, and South Africa, GEO invests in private correctional institutions and psychiatric hospitals. Extremely unusual stock and business plan, but when viewed impartially, it is not the worst investment ever made because there will always be a demand for jails and asylums. Honestly, it is sad, but that's the way things have to be. The ethical arguments against it fail too because societies require such enterprises. In the second quarter of 2022, he will dive headfirst into this stock and make it the centerpiece of his whole American holdings. The strange thing is that he sold these stocks in the first quarter, then bought them back in the second quarter from Geo, and now he is doing it again in the third quarter. He increases his holdings by a further 300%, and the stock accounts for 38% of his portfolio's value. Nonetheless, everyone, we wouldn't be surprised if the next filings reveal that he has sold this stock again. That seems to be his pattern, to a certain extent, and we could be wrong, but we believe that he buys and sells based on his estimation of the stock's true worth. Our guess at what his strategy would be. Even with our knowledge of basic fundamentals, we cannot guarantee that he will never sell another one of his stocks. He also had a very similar approach to trading. That gives you an idea of his trading technique, which entails frequent buying and selling over short time frames. But let us check out his present stock portfolio. As of today, he is only invested in 6 US stocks, but those 6 stocks show that his trading method is successful. The first is $38,000 worth of GEO stock he sold. We have already gone through his stock and the company's offerings, but take note that the last price we have for Burry shares is up 39%. Curate Retail Group represents 24 of his total holdings and is his second largest position. Video-driven shopping on TV, e-commerce sites, digital streaming services, and social media sites all contribute to Curate's dominant position in the video commerce industry. They've come up with a business strategy that combines retail with amusement, and it is a good one. Most people enjoy watching videos and documentaries about regular people doing regular things. 
Literally, everyone is always glued to their electronic devices. Kosovic is Burr's third largest position, accounting for 15.5% of his portfolio. And it has increased by 30% since the last non-prize that we know he held the stock. This is the only stock in Burr's portfolio that has decreased in value since the last nine prizes that he bought the rest of the stocks. Poor Civic is yet another corporation that operates private prisons and jails. With over 65 facilities and over 90,000 beds, this firm is the second largest private corrections provider in the United States. He considers himself a value investor, but two of his three greatest holdings are in the United States jail stock market. Perhaps Burry is a value investor. He made 39 and 30% gains respectively on both of his prison stock investments. Aerojet Rocketdyne's holdings is number 4. The value of this on the New York Stock Exchange accounts at 12.8% of its total holdings. According to their website, Aerojet is an important contributor in launching America's next space age, providing systems and components that will help us travel deeper into the solar system than ever before. Aerojet is an American manufacturer of rockets and electric propulsive systems for space defense, civil and commercial use. Burry's last known purchase price was $40 per share. Therefore, the stock has appreciated by 39.7% in the time since then. Charter Communications is the fifth largest holding, accounting for 7.3% of the total portfolio value. The Spectrum brand of internet cable TV and sports, as well as 5G mobile service, is owned by Charter Communications. From its last reported price, Shares of the company's stock have increased by 12.6%. Burry's portfolio is completed by Liberty Group, which accounts for 2.3% of his total portfolio value. That company offers broadband video, phone, and mobile services from its headquarters in the United Kingdom. As a result, he now owns not one, but two telephone and internet companies, as well as Rocket Company, a video commerce company, and a pair of jail service companies. And, as strange as it may sound, his buy-sell trade plan appears to be paying off. The stock prices of five of the six corporations have increased, while the price of the sixth has decreased. Liberty is up 28%, while Geo is up by 39%. Core Civic is up 30%, Aerojet is up 40%, Charter Communications is up 12.6%, Curated retail that saw a decrease by 20%. In our opinion, this is more similar to trading than value investing. But it does seem to produce positive results. From the look of things, he is turning a nice profit. We have just finished reviewing his stock purchases and portfolio as it currently stands. We will say now that he isn't obligated to reveal which stocks he is shorting. However, thanks to his Twitter antics, we do know that he has a track record of shorting at least one stock. When looking at Michael Burry's Twitter accounts on the 2nd of December 2020, he tweeted that he has short on Tesla stock, calling the price ridiculous. This began the online feud between Michael Burry and Elon Musk, the origins of which are unclear, but may be related to Michael Burry shorting Tesla stock. Burry tweeted once more in January of 2021. He made a remark. After Tesla stock had already increased significantly, his advice was to savor the moment because it wouldn't last forever. Fast forward to the present day, and it's noteworthy to note that Tesla stock has been struggling since November 2021, when Elon Musk first called Burry a broken clock for his repeated prediction of a recession. A number of factors, including the state of the economy, production problems, and concerns from investors about Elon's time spent on Twitter have contributed to the 73% drop. So, it would seem that Brewery made a ton of money with his shorts, but he didn't. We know that Brewery indicated he had exited his Tesla shortly in September 2022. He had waited a little longer. He might have made even more money. Although the stock price has dropped significantly, it appears that Brewery was correct in his assessment that Tesla was expensive. This time, however, he had the intestinal fortitude to repeat his successful shorts strategy, and he lost a substantial sum of money in the process. That's the only Michael Burry short I'm familiar with. As we mentioned, 
the law doesn't require him to report shorting activity. Instead, he only needs to report stock purchases and sales. With his unconventional method, he has amassed quite substantial percentage gains. But as for you, what are your thoughts about this one? Is Michael Burr's strategy quite impressive? Or do you think another investor has done a better job in investing compared to him? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. But other than that, thanks for watching. This is Investing Path. And if you liked this video, then go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and bell button to stay updated for more of our personal financing and investment content for you. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.